Okay, I admit it. I'm an idiot. A few hours ago, I uploaded a video review of these night vision binoculars. The reason I'm an idiot is that I got so focused on explaining what the various buttons do and some of the technical aspect of the binoculars that I completely forgot to show them working. This short follow-on video will correct that. To everyone who watched the first one and thought, what an idiot, all I can say is, you're right, and I apologize. In case you found this video first, there's a link to the first one in the description below. First up, there's a slot in the side of the binoculars, right here, for a mini SD card. There's also a jack in this position in case you want to hook it up straight to a computer. For starters, here's what some of the movie posters on our man cave look like with the lights out. With the same lighting, this is what it looks like through the binoculars. Note that it magnifies the image a minimum of 3x. It can go higher, but no lower. This creates a problem because it's hard to hold it still at that power. Now the room is almost pitch black. Since there's very little light to pick up, the image through the scope is almost completely dark. Turning on the infrared flashlight, even at the lowest setting, provides more than enough light to show everything. The built-in infrared flashlight is intended for use outside, so it's focused for maximum distance. As you can see, anything closer than 30 feet won't be evenly illuminated. Here, the walls are about 18 feet away. Outside, it's so dark, it's hard to see anything. Through the binoculars, everything is clear and bright. For some reason, the binoculars recorded the image much grainier than it was when actually looking through the binoculars. Turning on the infrared light makes things even brighter. Although I'm increasing the source's brightness, the viewer's auto sensitivity control adjusts it downward at the same time. So going to a higher brightness doesn't have any effect on the image other than wearing out your batteries faster. So I recommend using the lowest setting possible. The higher settings are for objects that are very far away. Here we're only looking 90 feet across our backyard. Now we've moved out to the country where it's so dark that without the infrared illuminator, the binoculars can't pick up anything. Here the infrared source is set at maximum. Objects 300 feet away can be seen. In the first video, I mentioned these binoculars can also be used for low-level stargazing. Here are the three stars of Orion's belt, which to the naked eye are so dim in my location that they're difficult to see and the surrounding stars invisible. I hope this follow-up video has provided a more complete idea of how these night vision binoculars work. Thanks again for watching.